Welcome again to Oklahoma Sports Scene. I'm Chris Lincoln, along with the coaches here, Gil Cloud, of course, Tulsa Public Schools Athletic Director, and the Hall of Famer himself, J.B. Haney. Guys, on remote again for the first time at a Jimmy's Egg location, 71st and Garnett, here in Tulsa, the place for breakfast or lunch, and uh, Coach, they got it all right here, right? I can't think of a better place to be for breakfast. There's a Jimmy's Egg, and, uh, you know, my wife and I come up here every Saturday or Sunday, and we just live a mile away from 71st and Garnett. Uh, there's three other locations in, in Tulsa, but great food. Food, great breakfast, good place to be. This menu is not only breakfast and lunch, but JV, you like this? Look at that for us, huh? 55, oh, 55. plus now menu. Oh, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> we had a great time. We're going to have a special guest here coming in from their corporate office to talk to us about some of their specials. We'll show you some of the specials uh, throughout the show as well. So, again, great to be here at Jimmy's Egg. All right, guys, uh, let's talk about what we have coming up on the show. The big O, Jerry Ostrowski. Jerry Ostrowski, uh, obviously a professional football player, an All-American at the University of Tulsa. Recently had his jersey retired, number 55. What a great honor for him him and we're looking forward to what he's going to tell us Chris and JB Kelly Hines has done a great job covering the University of Tulsa sports as the beat writer for the Tulsa world well you know I think she does a tremendous job because her heart is in it and she loves TU she loves Tulsa and the result of that she's going to have some good information for us Tulsa Oilers hockey season is underway. They opened this past weekend with two home games. They've got another home game coming up on uh, Sunday at 4.05. They'll host Allen, drop the puck at 4.05, as I mentioned, at the BOK. And Rob Murray, their head coach, will be joining us here on Oklahoma Sports Team to talk all things hockey. Also, of course, as always, uh, Dale Day with his Remington Report, wrapping up the uh, big week of thoroughbred racing in Oklahoma City's Remington Park. All right, guys, hot topics, and it remains a hot topic. A week after Mike Stoops was dismissed from the University of Oklahoma, and it's like all people are talking about still. Well, you know, uh, if you uh, listen to the sports animal at all, you know who Jim <laughs> Traber is. Yeah. And Jim Traber has his own sources. There's right. no question about right. his sources. And there's no question about the integrity of his sources. Uh, and he and Mike Stoops had a conversation uh, on the uh, Traber show uh, last week about his sources. Uh, Stoops saying, no, that wasn't correct. There wasn't a fight in the dressing room. And Traber saying, I'm sticking by my sources. There's no question that did happen. Well, thanks to the sports animal and Jim Traber, we got a little clip of that uh, uh, interview that he did on the phone with Coach Mike Stoops. One of the conversations about linebacker Curtis Bolton. A lot of discussion, did he actually leave the locker room at halftime in the Cotton Bowl? Let's pick it up there as uh, Mike Stoops calls in to the sports animal in Oklahoma City, 98.1, to talk to our man Jim Traber. Okay, I believe we got Mike Stoops on the line. Mike, are you there? Yeah, Jim, what's happening? Nothing. So I guess you want to come on and, and say something? No, I don't have anything to say. I'm, I'm. What do you mean? I said everything I wanted to say today is 100 percent accurate and true. Okay. Well, that's. I just all I that's did was the, I got. Tell me, tell me, tell me what you heard because I. That that's the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. But when there's some stuff falsely said about me, that that hurts, Jim, and, and yeah. that hurts me personally. I mean, right. I hope and you I, understand that. Sure, I understand. That's exactly. I, I absolutely believe. I understand that totally. In a locker room, there was too much going on. There was too much at stake Saturday. And, um, you know, what happened to Buzzy, I didn't even know that until after the game, Jim, to be honest with you. And I texted you that. Uh, you know, I had no idea what was going on with him. Well, I thought that Jim handled that well, and and Mike, too. They part of his friends and stuff, and I know he felt challenged there. And it's been a tough week for Mike. But, Coach, how much change do you think we're going to see on Saturday when OU takes the field with a new defensive coordinator, Ruffin McNeil, and – uh, against TCU on Saturday. I think the, big, the biggest change, Chris, uh, when you look at changing in the middle of the season, yeah. uh, is not going to be scheme, uh, but it'll be attitude, motivation. Uh, there'll be a different tact the way they coach the kids this week. Uh, I think there'll be uh, an upbeat, more positive. Uh, I think Mike uh, realized, and when he talked to uh, O'Reilly after the game and said, hey, look, if you want me to leave, I will leave. I mean, they had that conversation, and so uh, I think everybody knew it was about time. Something needed to happen. Uh, these things happen in coaching. You know, there are only two kinds. One's a have and one's are going to be fired, and that's kind of how it is, and we move on from that, and uh, I expect them to play upbeat. I think they'll be excited, and I think they'll be very motivated this week. You know, I agree with what uh, Gil has said there. I think the, the attitude will be much better, but when you look at what Coach Stoops was faced with, as far as I'm concerned, I think when he got that renewed contract for what, almost a million dollars? Yeah. And so with this coming along, uh, it was kind of a good time for him to exit. 
Hard to imagine. This will be the first time, guys, since November 21st of 1998. There's not been a Stoops on the sidelines at Oklahoma. In a long time. What a Amazing. run. All right, OU, uh, that open date, they're coming off that to take on TCU. That'll be uh, Saturday morning, 11 a.m. on ABC, and you get back into Big 12 play. The TCU got rocked and upset last week by Texas Tech. Uh, Texas Tech is an interesting uh, uh, entity in, in the Big 12. They played really good one week yeah. and not so good the next week, and they played really well against TCU. Uh, and, you know, TCU's banged up a little bit. Uh, quarterback has not played as well as they thought he would coming into the season. And uh, I know they'll be most motivated this week though because they got to look at Oklahoma as, as, a, as a wounded duck yeah you know they, they, they've lost a game they've lost a coach uh, and uh, you know Patterson does a tremendous job of coaching right. and getting his players ready so I think yeah. it, it should be a heck of a football game and really. he's got a great record of they just never seem to lose after they've dropped a game that's they always come back with a win had a long streak with that going coach what's going on and still water the Oklahoma State Cowboys what a beating they took in Manhattan to Kansas State well, I'll tell you what, when you take a look at the Cowboys and the a schedule that they normally play, they, they don't get ready for conference play. They don't get ready for the tough teams that's coming. And uh, I, I don't know why they do that. I don't know what their purpose. I'm sure they have one. But uh, I know from my background in coaching and being a part of athletics, you had better get your kids prepared to play the tough teams. If not, they're not going to be able to stand up. Outscored 28 to 6, Gil, in that second half. The big, the big question, obviously, Chris, and, and it's everybody talks about it, the quarterback position yeah. at Oklahoma State. Uh, is there not a change? I think I heard one of the, the greatest lines that uh, the, that uh, Barry Trammell had on the animal last week, and he yeah. said probably the best quarterback uh, in Stillwater is Mike Gundy. <laughs> he was you a great know, one, that's for he sure. He was a great one, <laughs> yeah. but I, they just don't have the same type of athlete. Kid's a good athlete, though, yeah. no question, but a very small school. But I don't think he's as good an athlete as they need to go to make that offense run. And OSU, probably a good thing to have an open date this weekend. And then coming in the week after that, Texas, Texas comes to show right. out. And I really believe, I tell you right, I think they'll beat Texas. I think they will, too. I think they always play well against yeah. his record against Texas has been outstanding. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they'll be they'll have a week to kind of regroup and figure out what and get some people well. I think yeah. this time of the season, when you get to week six and seven, you know, the, the kids are banged up. You got Knicks every, all over the place. And I think it, a week off is going to help them uh, both mentally and physically. Well, I know that neither one of you gamble. True. But if so, when Texas comes to Stillwater, uh, I don't like Texas, but they'll win the ball game. I you agree. Think I think Texas so. Will? Yes. You think Texas will win? I, yes, I'm they'll win. I'll, I'll take the yeah. points. Yeah, I like I'm that, too. I'm going to take the points. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you, Arkansas is another struggling team. And our big four guys have lost their six straight. Again, they had a big lead on Mississippi, uh, led by 17 points, and lost 37-33 in Little Rock last week. And had a chance to win <sighs> the football game. You know, and it was a lot like the, the Tulsa uh, yeah. loss. You know, they, they, were, they positioned themselves, and there were no problem, and then all of a sudden, uh, they just the, they fall off the bridge and and the things start happening and you know it's almost you know in, in coaching I know JB we, we face this all the time do you play to win or do you play not to lose yeah and I think when you get in a, in a position of playing not to lose that's when you lose that's right yeah. absolutely and we got now TU of course going over to Arkansas to uh, renew that rivalry and uh, coach they, they need to, need a good result I think they can get it over to Fayetteville well I tell you what I, it, I would not be surprised I think TU can win that game because if you go back and look except for a few minutes of play in all of their games they could have won almost every one of them let's look at the poll now this week and boy we had some big surprise in week seven as the number three team georgia lost number 16 west virginia lost the number 17 washington lost number 18 penn state lost an unbeaten colorado then lost to usc it really shook the poll up in oklahoma had an open date and went up two spots. You're back in the top ten, Coach. You know, sometimes it's, not, it's good not to play. <laughs> That's right. Just don't play. And, and do that way you don't make anybody mad and you get out there. But uh, what a great win uh, LSU had. Oh, wow. And then we, the Georgia. Yes, and, Georgia, and, and yeah. Georgia falls to eighth. Yeah. So I think, you know, that's one of those things. And, and West Virginia gets beat yeah. wow. by yeah. Iowa State. Iowa you State's know. up and coming, I'll tell you. That's right. Yeah. All right, guys. NBA basketball underway. Now the season has started. The uh, 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 Oklahoma City Thunder tipping off on Tuesday night. And then they have a game coming up in Sacramento this week. Then they'll start to come back next Sunday. They'll have their home opener as they'll uh, be hosting Sacramento this coming Sunday at the uh, uh, BOK. At the BOK. At the... Uh, 
Peak Center there in Oklahoma City. And before that, they have again, they open with Golden State uh, Monday night. Then they go on and play Sacramento on Thursday. Let's look at the Thunder and uh, their season. Well, you know, uh, I think the biggest question now is will Russell West Westbrook be ready to play? Wow, I know it. You yeah. know, we're, we're going to evaluate the scope on the knee. Is yeah. he going to be back? And that's one thing I don't, I really don't understand about the NBA, why we wait to the season and then we do the yeah, surgery. Exactly. Yeah. Why don't we do that in the summer? When you think you know, so? I just I can't get that. But uh, that's going to be a big cog in, in, in what they do, uh, obviously. And uh, if he's not well, we yeah. will make it. Billy Donovan starting his fourth season with the Thunder. He's had him in the playoffs. They've lost in the first round of the playoffs each of the last two years, though, losing to Utah being eliminated in the playoffs last season. So, uh, again, hoping they'll be a little uh, little better shape uh, coming into the season. And uh, wish the Thunder well, too. We'll be following them, all, of course, all season long. Welcome to Jimmy's Egg. Come on in. For more than 30 years, Jimmy's Egg has been starting people's day off right with hot, fresh, made-to-order food. Our eggs are fresh, cracked to order every time, and there are over 40,000 ways to craft your own omelet. With signature favorites like our meat lover's skillet or decadent cinnamon roll pancakes, you won't leave hungry. Breakfast and lunch is available every day from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m., so stop in today and let our friendly staff serve you. Stop by and see us sometime. Triple crowns in the last four years have reawakened America to the magnificent thoroughbred. And now, we've got our own triple to celebrate. Three decades of excitement. The Oklahoma Classics and Arts Festival returns to Remington October 19th with a night of entirely Oklahoma-bred thoroughbred racing. Plus, an arts festival, live music, and more Friday, October 19th. Remington's 30th. Thoroughly thrilling. And joining us now from Jimmy Zang in their corporate office in Oklahoma City, their marketing director, Mindy Landgraft. And Mindy, again, great to be here at Jimmy Zang. People love it. Talk about the breakfast and lunch schedule here. So we uh, don't have a schedule. We're open 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. and you can have breakfast or lunch anytime. So if you want a burger at 9 a.m., it's not a problem. And we always serve bacon and eggs. And locations all around, especially because Tulsa and Oklahoma City as well. Oh, absolutely. We're in Oklahoma, Texas, Missouri, Arkansas. The list goes on and on. We have 62 locations total. We just opened in Jasper, Alabama. So wow. we're very excited oh, about my that. Goodness, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're very high tech. We have an app too for Jimmy's Egg, right? We do. We actually are getting ready to launch our app. App. I'm very excited. I have to show you guys. This is our new app and it'll launch in Tulsa in November and um, you'll be able to earn, earn points for free food, specials, and um, we'll have online ordering. All right. And if um, you don't download the app, you can still order online through our website. So we're very excited oh about goodness. that. And speaking of food, here's Nancy Smoot, their this. general manager here at their location at 71st and Garnett. What do we have here? What's this now? So this got. is oh. just a two egg break. Uh, well, I want the skillet. Wow. You want the skillet. Here. Everybody wants the skillet, Give me the skillet. By the way. I'll trade with you. <laughs> What? You want to trade? Yeah, I want to trade. I want the skillet. Well, I guess I do. Yeah. <laughs> okay, tell me about my skillet. I love this. This is a carnitas queso skillet. It's very popular. It has pulled pork, mm. sausage, bacon, and it's um, oh, on a bed of hash brown scrambled with two eggs. Then we top it with Monterey Jack cheese and queso. <laughs> Tomatoes and onions, really good. What is Coach Cloud out in front of him here? That is a bacon cheeseburger, and it comes on a brioche bun, which makes it extremely Ooh. yummy. And then you get your a choice of one side. All of our side choices are open. We like to let our customers tell us what they want. So if you want hash browns loaded, you oh, get those, yeah. or you may want sliced tomato or you may want, you know, home fries. My it's your goodness, choice. Look at that. Menu and Grab should be with us throughout the show here this morning on uh, Oklahoma Sports Scene, brought to you by Jimmy Zay. By now, we're going to eat.
And welcome back to Jimmy's Egg's Oklahoma Sports Scene. Now taping at uh, Jimmy's Egg at 71st and Garnett here in Tulsa. Very special guest, our featured guest of the show, the big O himself, Jerry Ostrowski. The great TU All-American, of course, the co-host of Pat Jones on the Sports Channel 97.1. Jerry, great to have you with us. Thank you very much. Tell us about the honor now of you getting your jersey retired at the TU game coming up. Well, it was something I didn't expect waking up that morning. Um, you know, it's you, you have the show on, the, on your mind. You're trying to get everything going. And next thing you know, you get these people walking in your room and they're telling you to read something and uh, totally caught me off guard. Uh, found out that most of the people around me knew two weeks prior, so um, <laughs> they did a pretty good job of keeping it a secret. So it uh, still hasn't quite sunk in yet, to be honest with you. It's pretty, pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Honor. Jay was the fourth. Uh Tell us a player in history to be named first team AP All American 1992 and have his jersey retired October 27th for the Tulane game. So, quite an honor, Jim. Yeah. I'm sure that that's something that will resonate for the rest of your life to be retired oh. jersey and everything. And, of course, and to have your, your, your coach still living here in town. Right. Really need Dave Rader. You go back all the way. I remember playing golf with Glenn Dobbs and listening to stories from Glenn and talking about how you know innovative they were in the passing game and all that. Then moving on up through and then playing for Dave Rader in a really weird situation where the guy who recruited me, George Henshaw, I never played for. He left and went to the NFL and I'm playing for Dave and you know his first year was mine and it kind of was the start of a really good time of, of Tulsa football. Well, and you closed it by playing in the Senior Bowl in 91. That had to be a great thrill. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. I mean, you're you kind of when you go off on a field and you're with these guys that are all considered top NFL draft picks, it's kind of eye-opening that maybe you've got a chance to do something. Because all the way up until then, I never really thought too much about playing in the NFL. I thought about coaching, teaching, doing things like that. And next thing you know, I'm out on the field with some of the best in the country. And it was, uh, it was pretty special. You came to the University of Tulsa, a Pennsylvania guy. Yep. How'd you get to TU with that? Um, I was talking to Coach Rader about this the other day at the event that we were at. Right. We had approximately 20 guys from Pennsylvania and Canada that were down here. Gotcha. Um, Mark Thomas was my line coach. He played at Penn State, was from Pennsylvania. Um, they had kind of a pipeline thing going on. And if you remember, in the 70s, Back in the day, the, the Tony Alicios and a lot of those guys were all from Pittsburgh. I mean, it, it had been something that was there because of the whole oil business. Right. Guys from Western PA coming down here and vice versa. And um, friendships and bonds were built. And next thing you know, we had guys from PA down here. So, yeah, it was, it was, it was pretty a uh, pretty special group. After the 1992 season, NFL draft, Kansas City Chiefs, 10th round. But you really made your name in Buffalo. Yeah. Um, Cut three times before I made it in Buffalo. Uh, so, you know, it's it's not an easy business. People think that playing in the NFL, you, you get drafted and you're going to be there for 10 years. It's yeah. it's not that way. Uh, you've got to grind. you got to work hard. And uh, when I got to Buffalo, they gave me a break. Um, strength coach and I became best buddies and uh, worked out four or five days a week with him and just got better. And, you know, as far as scout team and, and running practice squad and learned multiple positions, got better in the weight room and got in better shape and, Rest is history. Yeah. Who did you play for at uh, Buffalo? Marv Levy, oh, Wayne yeah, Phillips, forever, yeah. and very, very briefly, uh, Greg Williams. But Marv was uh, very much like Dave. It was funny how the two coaches I played for were very, very similar. Um, Marv was incredibly cerebral, a very calming voice. Um, we did things completely different than most teams back then. I remember going to training camp of Kansas City, and it was three hours of practice, full pads. We got to Buffalo, and we went through practice, did about an hour and a half deal, and he called everybody up, and I'm like, all right, we're getting ready to hook this thing up. And he goes, all right, early outs are out here at 2.30, and rest of you is at, two thir at 3 o'clock. And I'm going, I looked at Glenn Parker. I said, well, what are we doing? He goes, what are you doing? We're going to go eat lunch, man. We're done. And I was like, <laughs> wow. But he was kind of the innovator of this. Keep your guys fresh. Mm -hmm. it, just because you practice long doesn't mean it's right. You know, getting things done correctly, getting done in a short amount of time, and getting as much rest as you can. And um, you know, he kind of was a fore, forefather of that. You know, when you look at everything that's happened to you <laughs> over the, when you came, did you feel like that it was going to be what happened and what you are today? No. I had no idea. I mean, when I was recruited by Tulsa, I had to look on the. I went to the library after Mark Thomas left. I really did. I tried to figure out where it was. I knew it was in Oklahoma. I had no idea where. If you told people in Pennsylvania I was going to going to Tulsa, they said, "Oh, you're going down to New, in New Orleans." I'm like, "No, that's Tulane. I'm going to Tulsa. Well, where is that?" 
Um, so no, I mean, I've, I've, I've built a tremendous amount of relationships out here. Great life. I met my wife out here and it's been, it's been wonderful. Eight year career, uh, the Buffalo Bill, 1994, to 2001. This is an amazing stat to me, Jerry. He started guys in 102 of 106 NFL games. That, that's something to say. Uh, that's what you do. Yeah. You're, you're paid to go play. Yeah. And um, some of us are real fast and super athletic, and other of us are adorable, and we're workhorses. <laughs> and I knew my role. Yeah. I knew what I was there to do. And um, uh, no, I was I was going to play because that's what I was that's what I was paid for, and they were relying on me to play. And I think that was a big part of why I lasted as long as I did because they knew that they could rely on me. Um, I played all. I played four positions up front. I didn't play. The only one I did not play is left tackle. And I think I could have done it if they put yeah. me there. But I, both guard, center, and right tackle, I played about three years. Started about three years at each spot, um, and I was reliable. Yeah. And, and that business, when they're 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 paying you to play, they want you to play. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you transition into radio? Um, I was from Philadelphia, and if. Other than New York, uh, WIP out of Philadelphia was yeah. kind of the the 610 WIP was kind of the godfather of sports radio. Uh, we listened to it all the time. It was in my parents' cars. Um, my mother would come home and she'd be like, "You hear what Angelo Cataldi said this morning?" You know, she was into it. And um, I don't know if my mother really sounded like that. But anyway, uh, it was just something I enjoyed. I've always enjoyed the media side of it. Even when I was playing, I enjoyed. You know, I had pretty good friendships with the newspaper guys and things of that nature. So um, it was just kind of a natural transition. Plus, I like to talk. And how much fun is it to be with Pat Jones? I always said it's the easiest job I ever had <laughs> when I was with Pat on the radio. You just ask Coach a question. Yes. And let it go. Just sit yes. back. <laughs> yes. I've known Pat for quite some time. Obviously, we played against each other every year when Tulsa and OSU right. played against each other every year, which they still should play against each yeah, other every year. And um, we, we had a relationship from them. And then when he was in, in Miami, we'd see each other twice a year. And Pat would always hang out at the tunnel. We would talk for a long time. Of course, he talked to Thurman as well. But... Um, We've had this relationship for quite some time, so it's been an easy transition. But no, it's fun. Yeah. I mean, it's a good time. It, it is that whole Forrest Gump, you never know what you're going to get type thing. Yeah, I mean, exactly. It, just, it, it, it all depends. Uh, well, we're going to take a break here. I know the TU fans are a lot of concern about this TU football team, what the program's heading. Jerry's close to the program. I'm going to get some of his comments on the state of TU football. And some of the fans have some uh, questions, too. Back with Jimmy Zags, Oklahoma Sports Team, right after this break. Great news. Primo Mitsubishi is again number one in sales in Oklahoma. I've made some key changes. Next time you come in, you'll see some very familiar faces. Mitsubishi has increased discounts on all 2018 Mitsubishis. Save up to $3,000 on the all-new Eclipse Cross and up to $4,000 on other models. All Mitsubishis come with a 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain limited warranty. Come see us at Primo Mitsubishi, 15309 South Memorial, or on the web at primomitsubishi.com. Every minute, every day, and every night, there's someone who needs us. Every week and every year, we bring something new to the way we care for individuals and our communities. Every thought and every action is spent improving the way we imagine health and wellness. Because every child, every woman, and every man deserves the best possible life. St. Francis Health System. Healthcare for life. At Roger State University, we keep things personal. It all starts here. We make sure our graduates get the most out of their education. RSU has campuses in Claremore, Bartlesville, and Pryor, with on-campus housing and a wide variety of programs to suit your needs. It all starts here. Roger State University. Welcome back to Sports Scene, where we have our very special guest, Jerry Ostrowski. And Jerry has something in common with the, what I do and what JB did for a lot of years. Jerry, you're coaching at Holland Hall. Yeah, I've been there since 2005. Uh, good friends of mine, TU Connection, Brian Thompson. He's one of my best buds. We played at TU together. Uh, Brian Underwood's over there. We have a bunch of guys that have Tulsa Connections, and we uh, just kind of fit. And my kids go there, and 
you know, I, when I left football, I didn't couldn't play anymore. I, I still had a connection to it, wanted to wanted to be a part of it, so uh, it just kind of was a natural fit. And of course, uh, a, a new era in Holland Hall athletics, being a yeah. member of the Oklahoma Secondary School Activities Association. Yeah, it was funny. We used to drive down to Houston, you know, a couple times yeah. a year to go play, and. I remember one of our assistant coaches were driving down there and he goes, man, he goes, you know what? He says, we passed about 15 to 20 schools that we can get our tail ends beat by. We don't have to drive nine hours to do it. <laughs> and I was like, you're right. And uh, so it just made sense. We got in the association. It's been a wonderful fit for us. Um, I know sometimes uh, some of the schools get a little antsy because they're playing, you know, private, public and all that. But it's been a blessing for us to be able to play in the Open State Association. Well, when you take a look at who you play, the, the, to me, and, and you mentioned this a while ago, the fact that so many of the schools are not up to the level you are, but two or three are. So uh, that is a problem sometimes, isn't it? Uh, I mean, it's just it's just part of being a you know we're we're just trying to we're what we look at it is when we go play in the in the state association we look at ourselves as we try to we try to be ambassadors we try to we try to do as much as we can for everybody. We know that we're blessed as far as the school goes, and we know that right now in the state, there's times where you know things are tough for some of the programs just because of financial, you know, money and being able to hire coaches and things like that. So we try to help out as much as we can with with different schools as far as their experience and all that goes. So it's been really good. We've met, we've got some really good friends across the board. We've got some coaches from other programs we've become really good friends with. You know, information sharing. We're just all trying to, you know, help one another because when it comes down to a JV, it's football. Yeah. And and when football's good for everybody, it's good for it's good for the state. So that's kind of how we see it. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about uh, youth football yeah. and your feelings about that because there's a lot of thing with. Concussion being as big as it is today, and so on. Uh, Jerry, how do you feel about that? I think youth football is it is a delicate situation, and I do think that the game is safer than it's ever been. But I also believe that when a kid plays, is more on the kid than it is an age. And I don't think that you get a kid that's like my youngest son. He was ready to play in third grade. He really was. He was more mature. He was physically, you know, further along than most kids. Um, but my older child wasn't. I mean, he wasn't ready to play until about sixth grade. And I think that sometimes we try to force kids into football when they're not ready. And it's the worst thing you can do. Um, you can't fake football. You're going to get hit. There's going to be, you know, there's going to be ouchies. There's going to be, you know, uh, at some point your son's going to cry and he's going to run to mom or you, you know. That, that's just part of it. If the maturity level's not there and you're forcing this kid to play, you're going to lose a player for the future. And I don't think there is a set time that you should play and shouldn't play. I think it's along the lines of the maturity of the kid. I didn't play till seventh grade. I played next to a guy in Buffalo that didn't play until junior college. He never played in high school. He was sitting on a beach getting ready to retire. He's from Huntington Beach, California, getting ready to retire. And he's like, I want to go to college, but we have no money. What am I going to do? Well, I'm kind of big. He went down to Gold Coast Community College, tried out, <laughs> made the team, went to Arizona two years later, drafted in the third round by the Bills and plays for 12 years. So, you know, one thing about football, it's, you know, you just – you don't have to start early. You're not. Don't listen to people that say, "Well, if you don't start it in, in second grade, you're going to be behind." That's ridiculous. Well, I think the other thing too, Jerry, and we hear this all the time, is that, that we talk about uh, exposure. Right. You got to be a, a six A to get the right exposure. Right. You know, the, the coaches know where the players right. are. Right. Yeah. There's no question right. about that. Um, my son plays two A football. Both of them did. My older boy went to Drake, and he's playing at Drake. He's going to be. He's a redshirt freshman this year. It's his first year playing. That's where he's supposed to play. Right. Um, if he was supposed to play at Norman, they'd have found him and he'd be playing at Norman. Um, I think that people get real tied up. And, and sometimes I think that the 6A thing is more for mom and dad yep. than it is for the kid. I agree. You know, th this always comes about. How do you feel about kids playing more than one sport? I know in a lot of places, they really want them to play something besides just one sport. What's your opinion? If you come to Holland Hall, you need to play multiple sports. We'd like to see you all three seasons. Now, granted, you know my experiences are with my own children. So my oldest is a basketball aficionado. He loves basketball. He's not a basketball player. So for him to go play basketball in ninth grade was ridiculous. He played up to eighth grade. In ninth grade, he went to the weight room. Then he threw, he threw shot and disc. Um, 
But we want kids to play as many sports as they can because, A, you don't know what you're going to be good at. B, if you play one sport over time, over and over and over again, the repetitive motion of those skills, you're more prone to injury and you're more prone to burning out. Um, I think that kids need to experience, I mean, I, kids need to experience choir. Yeah. They need to experience band. We have show choir at Holland Hall. My kids have gone down and they sing and dance. I mean, it's part of it. They need to experience as much of that as they can because when they get our age, <laughs> they're not they're not going to be able to experience that same. Hey, good. All right, time to talk about your alma mater. TU football, one in five, just lost to a fish trade. That was a absolute gut flash fight. Right. Lose that last second field goal, 25-24 to National like South Florida when we when we had them beat in that in that mm -hmm. fourth quarter. Tough. Um, I, I said this to Coach Montgomery the other day, and I've seen this throughout the history of TU. Sometimes there's teams that don't do well, but things are being done the right way, okay? As long as things are being done the right way and the kids haven't quit on you and they're playing hard, then I don't, I mean, sometimes those things happen. Tulsa is a different, it's a different animal than anybody else. We know this. All of us have been a part of that place for quite some time. You know, we're the smallest Division One school in the country. Um, Facility-wise, we maybe not, even though it's like light years better than when I was there, yeah. it's, it's not up to snuff with some of these places, you know. But it is a special place, and you can win football there. But you've got to, things got to build. And I think that they're doing things the right way, and I, I appreciate Philip Montgomery, and I appreciate the kids for how hard they're playing. This Saturday, we do one of the big rivalries with TU. You go to Fayetteville to play Arkansas, and you had experiences with that, too. It hadn't been good for TU. The first college start was in <laughs> Arkansas, right? was in Fayetteville. I was 18 years old, and I was in the locker room before the game, and, and Mark Thomas, my line coach, knew I was going to start, but they wouldn't tell me. Yeah. And then about five minutes before we went on the field, and this is honestly the truth, we're sitting in the we're sitting in the locker room and they're doing this pig hog suey thing outside, <laughs> and I'm like, this is wild, like I'm like, this is nuts. And about five minutes out, Mark, Coach Thomas walks over and says, hey, by the way, Rich has back spasms. You're starting. <laughs> well, isn't that guy Wayne Martin? Doesn't he start for Arkansas? The guy that got picked first round and uh, played for New Orleans for 13 years? Yeah, that's Wayne Martin's. That you're. And I was just like. Wow, <laughs> but you know it was it worked out well. But we should have beat them that year, and we had a forced fumble going in the score. And we have something for the big O well, here. I tell you what, Jerry, we really appreciate you being here today. Well, thank and you. Come back to Jimmy's Egg Office. All right, thanks. I will definitely. I, I think I, we've got something special for you. We have one. Of Mindy Landcraft has something for you. What oh. is this, Mindy, for Big O? We have a, the ultimate pancake combo. All right. It actually comes with flavored pancakes of your choice. Ooh. We chose the caramel apple pancakes. Right. It's National Caramel Month, by the way. Outstanding. It comes with eggs of your choice and then sausage and bacon. Well, thank you. You're very welcome. And Jimmy right. just made that up. Hey, right Jimmy's right here, too. What's up, Jimmy? Get some nuts. <laughs> All right, man. Well, the big stuff from Jimmy's egg. We'll talking more about that as the show goes on. All right. Take it there. Enjoy your breakfast. We have coming up. Appreciate Kelly it. Hines, by the way. Hey, She's you, the can, you, can I just be a part of this every week? Absolutely. Will you feed you? <laughs> Anytime, Jerry. All right. <laughs> and we have Kelly Hines coming up from the uh, the TU beat writer. Talk more about Tulsa football and Tulsa sports in general, and uh, a lot more coming up on the Oklahoma sports scene as we enjoy breakfast with the Big O here at Jimmy's A, 71st and Garnett in Tulsa. There is no limit to what we will do to help the next generation. As Oklahoma's only affiliate of St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, we are able to deliver state-of-the-art treatment and the most innovative clinical trials to kids with cancer and blood disorders. This is truly world-class care, right here at home. The St. Jude Affiliate Clinic at the Children's Hospital at St. Francis. Healthcare for life. Great news, Primo Mitsubishi is again number one in sales in Oklahoma. I've made some key changes. Next time you come in, you'll see some very familiar faces. Mitsubishi has increased discounts on all 2018 Mitsubishis. Save up to $3,000 on the all new Eclipse Cross and up to $4,000 on other models. All Mitsubishis come with a 10 year, 100,000 mile powertrain limited warranty. Come see us at Primo Mitsubishi 15309 South Memorial or on the web at primomitsubishi.com.
having breakfast at Jimmy's Egg on Oklahoma Sports Scene. Welcome back. And our special guest, Kelly Hyde. She's the uh, TU beat writer, has been for so many years. Kelly, give us first some of your background and uh, what got you into sports writing and here in Tulsa. Well, I uh, always grew up, um, you know, grew up reading newspapers every day, so kind of just fell in love with um, journalism. And then once I got to college, I went to Oklahoma State, uh, started working for the student paper there, and they needed somebody to cover the football team. And I was like, how hard can it be? <laughs> <laughs> it was a little bit harder than I thought it would be, but it was fun. I enjoyed it. And here we are 12 years later, wow. uh, still doing it. So um, this is my fifth year on the TUB, and I love it. Really, uh, you got into uh, sports, and you said it was a little bit harder than what you thought. <laughs> but what's what's the tough thing about it? I think um, it's tough because every season is different. You know, there are good seasons, there are bad seasons. This you know season with with Tulsa being, you know, not not a great year so far. I think uh, the challenge is, is finding um, things to write about on almost a daily basis. And um, not being too positive, not being too negative, finding a good balance. Um, but I love finding the stories that nobody's really talking about, talking to guys who maybe go a little bit more under the radar. So there are challenges just like with any job, but uh, I, I love um, kind of embracing those challenges and, and finding my own way to do it. Kelly, I think when we read your articles that what you just said is very, very obvious, that you do really enjoy it. But the thing that I get asked of me so often, why don't we have more that you have about TU in the paper instead of everything on OSU and OU? I, I know I get that question a lot. Uh, I can direct those questions to some editors at the Tulsa World, but uh, you know I, I think that with Tulsa being such a small fan base, that that's something that um, you know TU has to deal with. That's something that we try to figure out the right way to cover them. You know, uh, we're fortunate that you know I get to go to all the the football games, and a lot of schools of Tulsa size don't have dedicated beat writers. So um, I think we're, we're pretty spoiled here in Tulsa to have such a good paper that covers the schools really well. Uh, you know, high school football, all high school sports are a big deal to us too. So we're a small staff. We're trying to cover all the bases. And you know, the section is smaller. I think that's probably the yeah. biggest issue that we deal with now, um, just because of advertising being what it is for all newspapers. You know, there's not enough space as there used to be. So that's something else that we have to deal with. Reading your online reports, in fact, this morning you pointed out it's been uh, a while since Tulsa's been an FBS team, and uh, the string keeps longer. And some of your thoughts on that, and uh, where TU is right now. It's been a weird season because every week I thought this could be the week that, that Tulsa gets one of those wins. Um, it's not like, you know, there were some games last season that I didn't think Tulsa had a chance in. Right. Um, and this season, you know, even going into last week against South Florida, really good, unbeaten, nationally ranked team, I still picked TU to win. I thought that that was a winnable game, and it was a winnable game. Um, I think they've all been winnable games, and that's what I think is is frustrating. Uh, when twenty four ten lead with eight minutes left. Yeah, and Ugh. you you know I was I was on deadline. I'm writing away, and then you end up erasing uh. a lot of stuff. You know I I think it's just it's been a, a painful year just because there have been so many of those opportunities that were squandered, and I think that's what is you know makes the season kind of different from last year. I felt like last year there were injuries and a lot of other things going on. This year. Uh, for long portions of the game, TU has played well. It's just the fourth quarter or the first quarter. It's just been, you know, different times of the game. It hasn't been there. So uh, you see the capability, though. It's just yeah. a matter of putting it together. It's not like I don't think that it's a lack of talent. I, I do think that the quarterback position, there, there's, you know, an issue there. But you look at across the field, there's a lot of talent, especially in defense. And that's been good enough for, to deliver those wins. It just hasn't been a complete effort. Uh, but, you know, I think that the team is playing hard. They're working hard. I don't think that they've, you know, just dropped off because they're discouraged or any of those things. I think it's just a matter of finding that, that one play, that one moment to get them over the hump. And, you know, I think Arkansas is another opportunity for that. Obviously, Arkansas, you know, also hasn't beaten an FBS team. They're having their own issues. I think that this is an, another chance for Tulsa to get you know, on the other side of things. You know, uh, you're around the team and you're around the coaches and everything. Uh, how's the attitude now? Because this la last week had to be a oh. really, really tough oh. week. Yeah, I, I think that, I, I think it was Seth Boomer who said it best, you know, we're tired of losing. You know, I, I think it's hard when they're so close. They know that they're close. It just hasn't been there. And, you know, at some point, does that attitude that's been so well to this point, at some point, does that 
go away. You know, right. the practices have been super high energy. Everybody's saying the right things. They appear to be doing the right things, but I just know that if that were me, I'd be like, okay, <laughs> this isn't working though. Like we're still not winning. You know, I think that they've they've shown so much growth. And, you know, I think not being able to put four quarters together is kind of a, a sign of um, not having the maturity or maybe leadership, but you, you don't see any signs of that anywhere else. It's just kind of one of those weird things where, you know, they just need like that one more thing to, to get them there, but they seem to be doing all the right things. KV, you've always been big on getting more support for TU athletics and especially TU football. Get these TU fans out supporting these teams. Well, you know, th this is something that I have a hard time understanding. The, the fact that there are so many in metropolitan Tulsa that maybe they didn't go to TU, but they have been adopted by TU. And as a result of that, I just uh, feel like that the attendance should be greater. And every chance I get, I try to promote it. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think that's right. Only 16,000 people there, you know, it was a cooler night, Friday night, all those things that, that Tulsa has to deal with. But, you know, I think that um, those are some intangible things that, that can make a difference when you're in the fourth quarter, you know, to have a, a good home crowd. And they need, yeah. like I said, they need that something to get them there. And, and attendance, I think, would help. You know, I, I think it's uh, when you're not winning games, you know, people are less likely to come out. Um, but there's still some, some good games left on the schedule you know they have um Tulane coming up um UConn you know I think that there are some opportunities for people to come out and check out the team and like I said they're they're doing so many things right they are still entertaining to watch yeah. you know it hasn't resulted in wins but I, I think that um you know it's sad when when that support isn't there because you know I know that means a lot to Philip Montgomery I know they're doing everything they can marketing wise to get people there and it just has not happened Final minute, let's look ahead to TU basketball. Frank Haith, what do you think of this team? I know they're picked ninth. <laughs> ninth oh, that really yeah. surprised me, Coach. Yeah. Wow. It, it's surprising, but then it did it. You know, I, I know uh, Coach Haith last month said, you know, oh, we'll probably be like picked eighth or ninth. And I like laughed. Wow. I was like, no, I think we'll be higher. He knows. They're just not going to be getting the attention that they probably deserve. But I actually think this will be a better team than last year. Um, you know, they do have three place junior E2, but they have a guy named Dariah Horn who sat out last year from Nebraska, who is extremely impressive. I think that he will be a consistent threat. Um, and they, they have so much more length on the, on the perimeter. They have a guy named Zeke Moore, who's a 6'7 guard, a shooting guard. So they have definitely some really good pieces. It's just going to be like everything else. Got to put it all together. But I think this is Frank Case's most talented team at Tulsa. Well, Mindy, we really appreciate you being here with us today. Oh, and once you come back to Jimmy's Day oh, I again. I definitely will. Thank you so much. You I love this place. Kelly, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Kelly Hines, a TU beat writer, gave me some inside on uh, TU Athletics. By the way, uh, of course, we met Jimmy Zag, one of our corporate sponsors. So is Bricktown Brewery. Reminded to get down to Bricktown Brewery. October is their best time of the year. It's uh, the Victoberfest. But they're very special beers. Fifth consecutive year, they've had a celebration of some of the different ales and brews there. Also, they're Twisted Comfort Foods. Enjoy those. There's some Bricktown loaded chips, a Rockies tur uh, Turkey Reuben, short rib burger. We had, we had that last time with them. We it was did. fantastic. Get down to Bricktown Brewery and enjoy some of their uh, fall Bricktoberfest. At Bricktown Brewery, we're known for our famous original craft beers like Single String Stout and Bluesberry Ale. Did you know we also brew our own root beer at our Oklahoma City brew house? It's called Attaboy Root Beer, and you'll love it no matter what your age. Just ask for a Bricktown Kids menu with all the favorites for our guests 12 and under. Bricktown Brewery opens every day at 11 a.m. I bring Tulsa's voice to Oklahoma City and Washington. I build relationships with elected officials and community stakeholders to develop policies that grow the Tulsa region. A lot of my time at Rider State University, the personal relationships I developed with professors really helped develop a skill set that would help me serve the Tulsa region that I care about. It all started for me at Rider State University. Each week we talk about the GTR, and we know for a fact that Forrest Cameron and his wife Sharon put out a tremendous paper. Well, I brought all six of them today. I'd like for you to see them. The Union Boundary, and here is the Owasso Rambler. And if you live in Bixby, how about the Bixby Breeze or Broken Arrow, the Broken Arrow Express, Jinx, District Gazette, and then of course the Tulsa Midtown. All of those, the GTR. If you haven't had an opportunity to read one, do it, and you'll be proud of it.
Great news, Primo Mitsubishi is again number one in sales in Oklahoma. I've made some key changes. Next time you come in, you'll see some very familiar faces. Mitsubishi has increased discounts on all 2018 Mitsubishis. Save up to $3,000 on the all new Eclipse Cross and up to $4,000 on other models. All Mitsubishis come with a 10 year, 100,000 mile powertrain limited warranty. Come see us at Primo Mitsubishi 15309 South Memorial or on the web at primomitsubishi.com. We're back on Oklahoma Sports Scene at the Jimmy's Egg at 71st and Garnett in Tulsa, enjoying breakfast with the Oilers head coach here, Rob Murray. And coach, got off to a good start this past week in opening the season and uh, great hockey ahead of us. Yeah, it was It was actually, I, I was kind of, going into the season, even though we have training camp for the better part of 10, 11 days, we had one exhibition game and then um, you're always anxious to see what you, you actually, how you stack up against the other teams and I was pretty impressed the way we played. Uh, we won on Saturday night 2-1 and then uh, we lost in a shootout yesterday, but as as the points go in our league, if you if you lose an overtime or, or a shootout, you still get a point. So uh, we got three out of four points, so it's a good start and uh, we got... Uh, and I believe uh, six more straight home games yeah, coming right. up. So we're, you know, hopefully we can take advantage of that. Is that a unique scheduling situation where you open the first eight games wow. at home? It, it is. And and I think it's it's basically polar opposite of what we had last year. Because if you guys remember, we, I think we had oh, one right. game at home. Yeah. And then we went 14 on the road. Yeah. So we were gone forever. And, um, you know, this year it works out that way. I don't know if it's beneficial. I mean, I guess you can ask me in eight games when if it is or not. <laughs> but uh, it at least it gives us a chance to... I, I really felt when we got back home after that 14 games away... Um, I just felt like we had never even been in the BOK, you know, like we'd never even been in our, our home building yet. And it was, it was, uh, but um, this year, obviously we're, we're down there and, and, and it's, it's great to be in that building. How about that opening uh, night crowd? It was oh, great. Man. Yeah. I think over 10,000 people. I mean, it's, especially that building, you get that many people in there and it's rocking and, and uh, it's a great place to watch a hockey game. And I, I think that uh, obviously we don't get that, those kind of crowds on a consistent basis. I mean, it, it is my minor league hockey but uh, uh, we'll get a we'll get a couple more crowds of over 10,000 this year if, if last year's any indication you bet lots lots of new faces only four players yeah. back from last year and a team that just missed out on the Kelly playoffs yeah well um, you know we we I made a few changes this this year from um, I kind of kept the core group we had a couple of guys go overseas play in the British uh, league um, that's kind of that's kind of normal for for our, our level guys go you know either they they stay here or if they can't make it in the american league they'll they'll play in the in europe or over here and then um uh brought in a lot of new players and we've got actually right now we've got uh three guys down from uh san diego the american hockey league and then we've got two guys down from well actually more, i shouldn't say that uh, four five five guys down from san antonio so we've got uh eight contracted guys american league contracted guys on the team so that that makes up a quite quite a bit of a, the 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 roster right now but I, I like what we uh again i like what we brought in and and, and how we look uh, the first couple of games you know you have a lot of new faces playing always comes to mind the fans who, who have they really adopted quick and have they really enjoyed being adopted by the fans well i, th I think that the i know the guys do i think the guys love the uh, interaction with the fan base especially our our booster club and our our um, season ticket holders um the guys that you know are still here like adam Plushcash, our captain like you know he's just loved by the, by the community and and does a great job he is, you know, he's kind of, he's the face of the team. The new guys, they'll they'll warm up, or the fans will warm up to them quick enough, and and it, they always do. You know, it's there's so much transition at this level that you can't really, you're not going to get a guy that stays around for seven or eight years. You know, it just doesn't happen. And uh, you know, it's just the it's the nature of the beast of this level of of hockey. And and uh, so a guy like Adam Pleshkash is actually goes against the rule he's been here you know i think five or six years now so uh, it's nice to be able to have a guy like that 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 is the face of the team what kind of techniques do you use because you do have a transient group of folks coming and going uh, and maybe not as bad as baseball but uh, you, you still have people moving up and moving down and so on how do you do that how do you handle that as a coach well, it's, I, I guess um, you just got to keep everybody on the same page. I mean, we get guys coming in on a, you know, I'll get a guy walk in the door the first first time at 4 o'clock in the afternoon for a 7 o'clock game, you know, getting sent down from the American League. And 
we'll just I just have to basically go step by step through our systems. Uh, you know, and I always equate it to, to football. You know, like like when 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 I if we have two ways we want to forecheck and somebody can't get the sec understand the second one yet football's got a book about this, this deep <laughs> and these guys understand all these plays that are getting called in the huddle and i'm like and i look at hockey players saying like how how can you not get this so so it's i guess it's uh, I'm, I'm very dependent on uh, the hockey iq of guys that come in and out and that we they can get up and running and understand uh the schemes and concepts of, of the way we want to play 71 of the 72 other games to be on radio, be able to hear those and follow them on the radio on the Sports Animal Network of Stations. My buddy John Peterson is your Vice President of Communications. Does a great job with the play-by-play -play there and stuff. And that really is important. Let the fans keep following the others home and away. Oh, it's great. And, you know, we're on... Uh on ECHL TV also, uh, which is, uh, uh, you watch it on your computer, and then uh, JP does a great job with the, the, the radio, and, and with all the interviews, we, we were very active with podcasts this past summer, and, and they were very successful. Everybody was w really enjoyed those, so, um, you know, we, we do our best, and, and JP does a, a fantastic job, you know, getting the word out that, hey, there's a, there's a pro hockey team in town. <laughs> Little preview then for Sunday. 405 dropped the puck against Allen. Oh, always yeah. been a tough team. I was, you know, I was obviously only my second year here, but uh, uh, you know, it's it's a team that's a, a big rival, and uh, we play. I, I believe we play them 12 times this year, so <laughs> we'll see enough of them. But um, you know, Sunday afternoon is the first time we're going to get to go up against them. Breakfast for the coach. I will tell you what. Uh, Rob, we're sure glad you came this morning with us, and we want you to come back to Jimmy's Egg as many times as you want. Thanks, guys. Appreciate Thank you it. very much. Thanks for Good having me. Good luck for the season, Thank coach. you very much. And again, the uh, Oilers dropped the puck at 4.05 against Allen. Before you leave, we have many wants to treat you with one of our new iced coffees. Right. Talk about this. Yeah, we just introduced iced coffees, and we have chocolate fudge, my favorite, cinnamon roll, and then original. I so, like chocolate fudge. You get a choice. Okay, chocolate there fudge. you go. Thank you very much. What's your choice, guys? Cinnamon or original? Uh, cinnamon. Oh, cinnamon. Cinnamon. All right, Jay, I'll let you have the original here down here. Mindy, also, tell there us about go. a very special promotion you have coming up to support and uh, honor our veterans and active military people. Absolutely. As you know, November 11th is Veterans Day. And my birthday. And your birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> and so on Sunday, November 11th, any of our veterans or active military can come in and we will serve them a free entree. Great. Well, As a thank you. you. Definitely. We want to thank you folks here. and. Uh, Nancy Seward, of course, your general manager has done a great job. We appreciate you having us here at uh, for Oklahoma Sports Team. We're doing this a lot. Thanks a Thank lot. You. We have right. people that might have you here, too. So. We'll be right back with more Sports Team right after this. In 30 years, Jimmy's Egg has been starting people's day off right with hot, fresh, made-to-order food. Our eggs are fresh, cracked to order every time, and there are over 40,000 ways to craft your own omelet. With signature favorites like our meat lover's skillet or decadent cinnamon roll pancakes, you won't leave hungry. Breakfast and lunch is available every day from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m., so stop in today and let our friendly staff serve you. Stop by and see us sometime. What we see isn't always what we get. A smile can hide a hundred struggles. Depression, anxiety, addiction, and eating disorders affect more people than you realize. People you know. At Laureate Psychiatric Clinic and Hospital, we offer a wide range of inpatient and outpatient services to help anyone with any degree or form of mental illness. Laureate in St. Francis. Healthcare for life. 30 years ago, a race began. Along a quarter mile of dirt and dreams in Oklahoma City. Today, 
with the biggest prize money and the best horses. That glittering quarter mile is home to the best quarter horse racing on earth. Remington Park proudly presents our biggest quarter horse season ever, celebrating 30 years of hard racing fun. World's best, OKC Zone, Remington Park. Another Remington Park first took place recently as Remington Park's all-time leading owner reached yet another plateau. California Breeze won an allowance race at six and a half furlongs on October 11th, giving owner Danny Caldwell of Poto, Oklahoma, his 300th victory at Remington Park. Now here comes a run from California Breeze. It's Momo and California Breeze. Flight Queen is third and up the rail fourth and advancing. Flying Phelan, furlong to go, race on, inside Momo. Outside, California Breeze and California Breeze takes the assertive lead now by a neck. Momo battling back as California Breeze and California Breeze will get there by a half length. Caldwell burst onto the scene at Remington Park just over 10 years ago. He has established a business model that has put his racing operation at the top of the thoroughbred season standings nine times, winning the last eight seasons in a row from 2010 through 2018. The credit should go to all the people who helped me. I got a lot of people who uh, make me successful. Freddie and his crew, my jockeys, my shooters, veterinarian, everybody that helps, uh, it goes to them. I, I'm just the guy that kind of plays with the horses and recruits them. Trainer Federico Villafranco has been the main trainer for Caldwell during his dominating run at the top of the standings. The $1 million Oklahoma Classics Night takes place on Friday, October 19th a stakes racing celebration for top Oklahoma bred thoroughbreds. Horse players will benefit also with a $100,000 guaranteed betting pool in the Classics Night Primetime Pick 4. At Remington Park in Oklahoma City, I'm Dale Day, now back to Sports Scene. Thank you, Dale. Time now for parting shots, and Coach Haney leads us off. Well, I'm going to talk a little bit about the gambling in, high, in college football because the way it comes about now that it, you have to look at it at how much money is being put there. Will that have an impact on the players? I can't help but think that it might. Now, I'm not saying it will, but I would like for you just to think about it. Coach, what do you think? Well, I think that uh, the the championship series this year is going to be very, very interesting. We saw this past, past weekend uh, a number of upsets in the top ten. And I think what's going to happen every week as people get injured and, and the teams move along their schedule and they have to play those tough road games, we're going to see a lot of movement. You know, our good friend Joe Castiglione is the chairman of the committee this year. And I think it's going to be very interesting what the committee looks at when they get to week 8, 9, and 10 uh, to, to try to pick those final four. Can it be? We've really reached the halfway mark already of the college football season. Week 7 just completed. And, of course, what a shakeup, as uh, Gil was talking about here. And a lot of things are going to change before this season ends. I always think of Coach Barry Switzer, who always said no matter what else happens, only remember November. It should be interesting for our big four football teams to make a big run at the end of the season. Coming up next on Oklahoma Sports Scene next week at a big show, Tulsa Rough next to wrap up their season. And Steve Spavital will join us, former head coach at Broken Arrow High School and certainly a big name in high school football. And, of course, we'll have Henry Primo oh, with yeah. his gifts and things that he has collected over the years. You'll never know what he may bring us. Thanks again to Mandy Landgraf from uh, Jimmy's Egg as well as Nancy Smoot. Don't forget, they got great catering here as well. Call to get all the information. This is Oklahoma Sports Scene at Jimmy's Egg in Tulsa.